Hello, hello. We are live on learngrasshopper.com. We are live on Facebook and we are live on uh, LinkedIn. And I already see there are so many people here waiting for our webinar. Uh, just, just put some words some right on the on the chat if you can hear us well. Uh, we have a pleasure to guest Andreas here. Uh, can you say some, something, Andreas? So just we can yeah. see. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. We cool. can just uh, wait for answers from people uh, if they can hear us on LinkedIn and YouTube. So just uh, just give us a feedback if we have to fix something if you hear us well. Okay, we have Martin uh, here. Uh, this, Martin is our my first uh, student of the Grasshopper Fundamentals, so so good to hear, uh, good to see you here, Martin. That you're taking your Grasshopper skills to the next level, and yeah, maybe maybe using uh, Sophistic. That Tobias is here, Kirill. Uh, that's great. So we have people from uh, from Sweden, from Poland. Uh, that's good. Uh, just write in the chat as always where you are. Uh, sitting and watching this uh, webinar. Uh, I'm sitting uh, just uh, in Oslo, in Norway. And you, Andreas, where are you sitting? I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee, in the US. So what time, because we have, uh, there's 2 p.m. in Norway, and what time do you have this morning, right? It's 9 a.m. Okay. So it's a, it's a five hour time difference to, to Central Europe. Normally it's six hours, but there's like two weeks in the year where it's five hours. So it's, you know, it's better for me. So I don't have to wake up so early. Yeah. Yeah. So this. you, but you usually work with the European market or if the, uh, no, no, I work market. in the North, in the North American market. So I, ah, okay. I, I always deal with my European colleagues as well. So I need to talk to them, but my, my main work is with North American clients. Yeah, uh, just uh, just a few words. We are not starting. We are starting exactly at 2 p.m. So, so in the three minutes, we are just checking if everything is working. So if you have already any questions to uh, to us, both of us, so just write in the chat. So it will be this webinar will be also more about uh, 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 answering your questions if you have uh, anything about so using Sophistic and Grasshopper. So we will try, I will post your uh, comments on the screen so we can already uh, or already write your questions. So I will save it and show it afterwards. Uh, so how long have you been working in Sophistic, Andreas? I think it's exactly seven years, actually. I think I joined uh, March 2016, so seven years. And uh, yeah. before, uh, before Sophistic? Before I, I worked as a project engineer for a couple of years in actually in Costa Rica, where, where I am originally for, from. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I worked in an office there, did some uh, bridge design and building design. So it was like a general, general purpose office. Nice. And you now living and you have plans to just live in the US. You're not planning to uh, come back to Costa Rica. <laughs> no, so, no. So I've been all over the place. I, I was born and, and raised in Costa Rica until I was like, um, I think 19 years old. I, I moved to Germany and I did my studies at T TUM, Technical University of Munich. So I did the bachelor's and master's, uh, worked for, for a bridge office there in Germany, bridge specialist office to, um, as an internship, but still during my master's. Then I moved back to Costa Rica, worked for two years, and then went back to Europe and worked in Austria and in Germany for Sophistic. And then since about two, since three years, more or less in the US. Hmm. So traveling a lot. Yeah. But are, are you often in Europe? Once a year. Okay. Once a year. So I, I plan to spend the summer in, in Germany, hmm. actually. Nice. Okay, we have uh, one minute left, so I see there is more and more people already, hundreds of people watching uh, on the LinkedIn and uh, and uh, YouTube. Uh, and as always, if you can just leave some uh, likes under the video on YouTube and on the LinkedIn, uh, just to share to maybe more people who will see this content and have the possibility to see uh, all the... <clears throat> Hold the video. Uh, I haven't seen anyone. I've seen some comments from LinkedIn. Uh, that's good. I haven't seen from Facebook, but maybe some people will 
uh, join there as well. Okay, we have already 2 p.m. so we can um, go to uh, our presentation. So without uh, postponing, so we start and already seen some questions. So it will be a session time at about like 16 minutes. We'll see, uh, but it's planned about content 60 minutes. Uh, afterwards, it's planned Q&A sessions. As I said before, if you have any questions already, so write on the chat, whatever, if you are watching that on LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube. So just write a question on the chat. So I will save it and yeah, I will ask it to Andreas. Uh, it's possible to get the presentation uh, for after this uh, webinar together with the recording uh, because this session is recorded, but it will be sent just for users who register. So if you haven't registered uh, and you're watching that on YouTube, for example, or uh, on LinkedIn, so it's still possible to register learngrasshopper.com slash webinars, or you can scan this code. And uh, so you will uh, get a recording uh, and PDF presentation tomorrow morning. And it's really worth to end until uh, wait until the end. We have really surprise that we have prepared with Andreas, but uh, I will not say now what is it, uh, but I think it's worth to uh, wait until the end. Okay, so there's three points that uh, what are you going to learn from this uh, session? So first of all, uh, Andreas are going to show how to connect and streamline work between Grasshopper and Sophistic. Uh, he presents uh, lots of really good examples, use cases. Uh, five simple ones that are, are going to just show how like principles of using Grasshopper parametric design in Sophistic, and then going to some towers building and two bridges examples. So there's uh, lots of use cases that are going to show, uh, to show the potential of using parametric design in the Sophistic. Okay, so this is this two gentlemen. It's me, Krzysztof Wojcław. Uh, I'm hosting uh, this webinar on my new platform, and today, today's uh, guest is Andreas. Uh, he is based in the US, as you, Andreas, said before. Hi, Andreas, mm -hmm. nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi, Chris, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so, Andreas, uh, Andreas uh, just uh, accepted invitation for making uh, this webinar, and we already have planned to do more uh, if you are going to like it. So, if you have any questions already, so uh, just put it on the chat. So, first, I will introduce myself a little bit for those who are seeing me for the first time. As I said, Krzysztof Wojsław. I'm originally Polish, but I've been living for 10 years in uh, Norway, based in Oslo. Uh, last year, I spent for creating my own platform uh, for teaching Grasshopper. And uh, there's already on my newsletter uh, 7,000 engineers, because I'm, uh, I'm teaching uh, mostly engineers how to use potential of Grasshopper and parametric design. So some of you maybe are knowing me from the YouTube channel where I'm sharing tips and tricks and how to learn grasshopper uh, i'm also i'm also an academic lecturer uh, on the ziggurat global institute of technology and on the biggest norwegian uh, university when i'm having like also uh, lectures about using parametric design and grasshopper and and um, virtual design and construction in the es industry so this is the agenda uh, for today mm. We have some interviews, some questions about uh, Sophistic connection with Grasshopper. Well, I'm going to ask, and if you have already some questions, so just put it in the chat. Afterwards, Andreas uh, uh, will have uh, his presentation and show some practical examples. And at the end, we have Q&A sessions uh, where we are going to answer all your questions. All right, so I think you can, uh, Andreas, we can share maybe your screen. And in the meantime, mm -hmm. uh, I can also, we can start some for those who have no what uh, what actually Grasshopper is doing with Sophistic. So you said that you've been working seven years in uh, in Sophistic, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. 
Uh, um, Chris, sh sh yeah. sorry, sh uh, should I share my screen already or or not yeah. yet? Yeah, you can, you can, oh, okay. you can, you can, you can, sh you can share your screen. So we 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 have it on the uh, on our. So yeah, uh, okay. just so it's uh, you've been working in Sophistix for seven years, and you said before mm -hmm. that you've been working as a designer uh, before. Is that correct? Yeah. So. I have, I have a little bit of practical experience, not just working for a software company. I, I also worked as a, as a bridge engineer for two years um, yeah, in, a, in an office, office in Costa Rica, which is the country that I come from. Yeah. Uh, so now your position is like managing director of the North America in the, uh, in the Sophistic in the US, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So I, I manage the, the US subsidiary of Sophistic. It's called Sophisti North America, and uh, I take care of the of our clients in in yeah Canada and, and the U.S. mostly. Yeah, so just jump into jump into the grasshopper. So you've been working seven years almost, and how long mm -hmm. uh, have you have you been using grasshopper? Just uh, not 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 the connection uh, actually with Sophistic like general. How long have you been using grasshopper? Yeah, I think fairly quickly after joining Sophistic, I I started to, to hear about Grasshopper. Some of our clients were already using it. it actually, in Scandinavia, they, they were using it, and it really impressed me. So uh, about six years ago, I started diving into, into Grasshopper. Yeah, and how long is this live link connection between Sophistic and, and Grasshopper? When was the first like plugin developed? Do you remember? I, I don't know exactly. So I would have to ask my, my colleagues, in, in, in the programmers, so they know it better. Uh, it's been a few years. It's been maybe four years or something like that since we started developing. Yeah. And what is actually possible to do with Grasshopper? Because for sure, like modeling stuff, this is like Grasshopper and Rhino. This is like powerful tool. So mm -hmm. if I can imagine like connection these two software, so I am imagine like creating this geometry. Uh, yeah. If, is it something else that you can create uh, with this connection? Yeah, no, that's that's basically it, I think. So you you're going to use Grasshopper to create your your basic geometry, and then you in the next step you will start adding structural properties to the to the basic geometry. So we have developed some components uh, like structural area, structural line, and so on, where you can assign a cross section, assign a, a material, the thickness of the structural area, for example. And then we take it on further to to connect with some sophistic modules and, and run run a mesh and then run some analysis. So yeah. it's it's basically using Grasshopper as a preprocessor for analysis in Sophistic. Correct. And I've seen a lots of examples with the bridge design, but mm -hmm. is it possible, right, to connect with the buildings like a make a structure analysis uh, the same the same rule? Yeah, here? yeah, absolutely. So Sophistic is is uh, it's a FEA software and it's. It's like a, like a general FEA software. So it can do buildings, it can do bridges, it can do retaining walls, and it's it's all in one software. So it doesn't really matter if that structural area that you are defining is is going to be the, the slab of a building or if it's going to be the the deck of a, of a bridge. It's up to okay. you. OK, so you can have like geometry. Let's say you have can your tower or let's say bridge design as a geometry, but you can also define all loads or, Ex or yeah. you uh can you yeah, also yeah. make a can can you also make a combination like let's say for example you have some um, um let's say geometry already in sophistic and you want to have uh, like defined floats in grasshopper mm -hmm. or another way you have or you can define your geometry in sophistic and then uh then have a load in uh, in grasshopper and another way around. yeah absolutely so i, I think we're very flexible here what we're doing in the end of the day is we are we are creating text files. So Sophistic uses a, a kind of like a programming language mm. that, that's developed by Sophistic. It's called CADIMP. And the Sophistic components in Grasshopper, they create this, te this text code. And then that text code, you can run it in the main software and you can create your geometry and your loads and whatever. So mm -hmm. Uh, where this text is coming from, it doesn't matter. If it's coming from Grasshopper, or if it's coming from our, from from Revit or from AutoCAD. We have interfaces to those two platforms. Or if you're just writing the text code on your own, or through through Python or whatever, and uh, you can just link it all up in the main FEA software and and yeah, go as you will. 
Yeah, so l lately I had a webinar with uh, Sebastian from Trimble mm -hmm. about Tecla and he was showing like this live link connection. Here in Sophistic it's a little bit different, right? Because you are generating this text file or... Uh, yeah. Or... yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm, I'm going to explain later. We have yeah. essentially two ways of, of connecting to Sophistic. So one way is you stay in, in Grasshopper and we have a component that will create the project inside Grasshopper and you're able to, to mesh it and run it inside Grasshopper without having to open the main FEA mm -hmm. tool. That's work, workflow A. Workflow B is you create these text files, you save them to your project folder and then you load them into the, the main FEA software and you start doing all your, your analysis there. So those are the two ways of, uh, of working. Um, yeah, Tecla has a live link. So I think with Tecla, I'm, I'm not an expert there, but I think you you basically send geometry in, in live. So if you change your geometry in, in Rhino or in Grasshopper, the geometry in Tecla is changing in real time. Correct, correct. Uh, with Sophistic, we are, we're basically updating this text code in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, but all you need to do is rerun it because you, of course you have to remesh it uh, for it to, to have a, an actually working model, you need to remesh that that model. So this this step is necessary. It's and, yeah. and that's why it's not like a like a real live link. Yeah, yeah. So you need to analyze that and make this yeah. like a process. So I understand. Uh, yeah, we have a uh, uh, Diego here. Grasshopper to process sophistic models will be great as well. Uh, but actually, this is what actually sophistic is doing, right? To to process uh, to process models, right? Yeah, so the, the again, uh, Grasshopper is the preprocessor, Sophistic is the, the processor and the postprocessor. Ah, okay. okay. So yeah. maybe he's asking about postprocessing in Grasshopper. This in is Grasshopper. something we, we don't have. Uh, we're thinking of developing something, like start you know, showing some results in, in, in Grasshopper, but we haven't started with that yet. Yeah, so something like he, he Diego is asking something like Caramba. I don't know if you are familiar with Caramba. Yeah, like I am. yeah, like yeah. inside uh, Grasshopper. But uh, I think like developing this uh, Sophistic for many many years. I've been using Sophistic uh, myself. I I wrote actually my uh, bachelor and master thesis uh, in Sophistic, so I know the software. So they mm -hmm. develop a lot and yeah, to develop a new software in Grasshopper, uh, it's kind of that uh, that advanced tool. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's not possible, but, but yeah, but it's really good to maybe have it like a process yeah. process thing. Yeah, so we, we have a lot of very good tools for post-processing inside Sophistic. So doing it inside Grasshopper is, it's beneficial, definitely. I see the advantages, but it's not the, the main scope right now. Right now we want mm -hmm. to, mainly use the parametric capabilities of Grasshopper to, to leverage parametric studies and be able to, to send an updated model to Sophistic and run it there very quickly. Yeah. So if I remember correctly from my studies when I wrote my master, it was two, two options to make a, a Sophistic model. So first one was to make in, in Teddy, uh, just mm -hmm. to write the code, right? Yeah. And the second one was SophiPlus, mm -hmm. uh, kind of AutoCAD when you can, could create. So by this time, it was these two two methods of uh, making geometry, and now there is the third possibility. Just correct me if there is any any more ways to make geometry. And yeah. the third one is uh, Grasshopper, when you can just create your geometry in Grasshopper and send it to uh, send it to Sophistic. Yeah, exactly. So the one, the the one that you're missing is Revit. So we are actually putting a lot yeah. of effort also into our, our Revit uh, link. And yeah, you should check that out if you're interested in, in structural engineering uh, inside Revit, because there we are doing the whole work in Revit. So you're actually able to bring bring back uh, results and 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 so on. So it's a very very well developed interface, just like our AutoCAD interface. The Grasshopper interface, I would say, it's the the newest one, but okay. uh, it's it's very popular too. I think that for sure it will be question about that is it is it something that uh, possible to make this revit sophistic grasshopper integration as well or uh, these two these two like connections are not like speaking to each other they are not speaking to each other directly mm -hmm. there are again there are ways to do it if you if you're just creating the the teddy file the text input you can link some things together or for example i've seen people create a model in Revit, but let's say th that model has a very complicated uh, roof structure or a very complicated facade. 
So maybe that part you actually want to do it in Rhino and in Grasshopper. So you kind of separate the model, uh, do the easy stuff, the easy geometrical stuff in Revit, the complicated geometrical stuff in Grasshopper, and then you can easily connect both into into Sophistic FEA. You can okay, I understand. Both. Yeah. Yeah, understand. Okay, great. Uh, we have this like introduction, but let's go to like practical uh, examples. I will uh, share your screen uh, here uh, just to, so we can start and maybe go to the lead practical. So maybe you can tell a little bit more for people who haven't used uh, Grasshopper in Sophistic. Maybe just a few words. Uh, what is the workflow and so on? Yeah. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see your screen. And uh, if you can just uh, put away this uh, stop sharing, you are sharing your entire screen. You have like some note on the middle of the screen. Yeah, uh, yeah this one. OK. Yes, Perfect. correct. Now you can. Uh, everything is clear, so you can start. All right, so uh, thank you. I'll, uh, I have a few slides to show you, and then I'll jump on to, to Grasshopper Live and show you some, some examples. But uh, let's get started with uh, Small introduction. So first things first, first thing I wanted to mention is uh, if you're interested in our interface to Grasshopper, uh, check out our online documentation. So there is a 2023 version of this online documentation. Here on the top, you'll find the link and you'll get info important information like um, licensing information and installation information. So for example, if you want to use these tools, you have to go to Sophistic Application Manager or SAM and download the Sophistic Rhino interface. So the Grasshopper components are installed when you install the Sophistic Rhino interface. And the license that is required is the Rhino interface or the Granule X Geo. Um, so for example, if you don't have that license, then you will be able to download the program, no, no problem. But once you click on some components, you will get the message, uh, X Geo Granule is missing. So if that's the case, and if you're interested in using it, uh, talk to your local sales partner and uh, we can help you out there. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So it's possible to use like a Grasshopper script. Uh, is that I understand correctly? If someone do not have, is it open? Is it possible to open a uh, Grasshopper script? It's, um, I, I, it's possible to open it. There are some components that will trigger the, the license uh, query. Okay. Okay. So I think you can open it, but once you start doing some things, you you run into into trouble if you don't yeah. have that license. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is the this is the website for the documentation. Check it out. There's useful uh, things. We also have a command reference. We have some tutorials and and some content that you can download from the website, and uh, and so on. So definitely definitely important. Here is the, the command reference part of the page. So what we did here is for every Grasshopper component that we developed, we created some documentation. So you can click on any one of these links, for example, the, the, the assay component, and you will, see the, you will see more information, like the necessary input, what the component does, and the output of the component. So it's, it's very well described throughout all of the different components that we created. Here, what you see is the the what the actual interface looks like. So these are all the components that we made. You can see, well, this is the, the main Sophistic tab and it's divided into a bunch of smaller tabs. Um, we have a general tab, we have a cross section tab, we have a structure tab. So this would be all the structural elements like structural area, structural line, structural point and so on. We have the loads tab. We have the axis geometry tab axis based modeling and tendon. So these, these last three ones are specialized for axis based structures. So we, we did a, quite a lot of development to, to help you model bridges and tunnels basically. And yeah. not, not only the analytical part of them, also the geometric part of them. So you can actually get very precise geometric models of bridges and tunnels. Yeah, I've been using this uh, section tools and actually I need to say that they are amazing. Because mm -hmm. there, are, yeah. Because this this kind of tools you can develop, of course, in Grasshopper by yourself, like your bridges. But this like section sections and finding the lines and points. This one, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. I've been uh, I've been using this actually for making reinforcement, even mm -hmm. cool. for sending to Tecla. And yeah, I see that Sophistic is doing like a lot of uh, development mm -hmm. uh, because it could be like just to make uh, like some elements, beams, uh, shell elements and make some loads and that's it. But I see that there's um, make lots of components that make life easier. 
Definitely, yeah. So we, we created a workflow that will help you generate easily the geometric model of a bridge, but also the analytical model. And, and even further, if it's a beam model or a shell model, we have different components that very quickly help you create that, those models in a parametric way that's compatible with Grasshopper. Mm. So more on that later. Uh, down here, you also see some, some Windows uh, screenshots. So this would be our, our settings definition that we developed uh, recently. Things like um, setting up the size of the local coordinate system of the structural elements. So, you know, in some of our components like structural line, if you click on that component, you will see some of the properties that you assigned to the component in, in Rhino. So Rhino is your, your, v, your uh, visualization engine. And you will see, okay, that structural line uh, has cross section number one and group number 20. So that information is displayed in Rhino. And with these settings, you can change the size of the, of the, you know, the, the local coordinate system. You can change the, the color of the analytical model and so on. So there's a lot of settings there for, for visualization. And we also have some settings for units. So it's, uh, it's very easy to switch between metric and US units, for example. This, is, this became necessary because let's say we, we created an example in US units and then somebody goes and opens Rhino in metric everything will be scaled and would look really bad. So what we're doing here is we're saving the properties uh, and the units within the file. So if you open a US, a file that is meant for US units, it will, it will actually change your Rhino units to US and you will make sure you will always get that, uh, that model as it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also have some units, uh, standard units for like points, lines and areas and, and moments and so on. So you can see what is the default unit that is being taken. You can change that default unit if you want a different one. And it's working both for metric and US units. So definitely check that out. Uh, I think it's an important part of the, of the workflow. OK, so this slide summarizes the, the workflow in, in, the, in a simple way, the most simple way I could, I could think of. Step one is always creating that base geometry. And that base geometry is just grasshopper definitions where you don't need sophistic um, you could use sophistic i mentioned we have some bridge tools that help you create the base geometry so you can use some of our components to help create that base geometry but in general just think that this is just standard grasshopper definition uh, for that step number one step number two is where we use our structural components or our loads components or our even tendon components and we start adding structural properties or sophistic properties to those, to that geometry. And step three is, okay, now we need to feed in these elements or loads or tendons to the corresponding sophistic module. So we have here you, th this yellow uh, little icons here um, that stand for each of the sophistic modules. So if you don't know about sophistic, it's built in a modular way. There's a module for cross sections and materials. There's a module for, for the meshing. There's a module for the loads, for the tendons. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see here, all of these small pieces. So uh, you're essentially creating the text files or the Teddy. Teddy is uh, short for text editor, by the way. That's why we have that cute little yellow mm -hmm. teddy bear. It's, it's text editor. I really, I really love all the icons in Sophistic. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. It makes it uh, like... Uh, it's, it's serious, but it makes it more fun, I guess, like, like appear less serious. But uh, anyway, so that's the, that's the final step. And then we have two options. I think I mentioned this in the beginning, but we have two options on how to communicate with the actual FEA software. One is you, you run everything inside Grasshopper using a special component that we, that we have. It's called the project component. And option two is we link to SSD. SSD is the Sophistic Structural Desktop. And this would be if you're doing more advanced models like if you're actually working on a real project uh, you want to take it to the main fea software because you're going to have a lot more options there to run like a construction stage analysis or if it's a bridge if you're running a, 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 a live load influence line evaluation and so on these are things we don't have in grasshopper but we definitely do have in the main fea software so that's the intention of this second piece of the workflow the first one running everything in grasshopper is just like if you want to run some quick parametric studies change the geometry very quick, run it, run it inside Grasshopper, check out the, the, you know, the model, the, the, the mesh model. You can open it up from within Grasshopper and just do some quick things, quick changes and run it again. So those are the two options. I'll, sh I'll show a little bit more of both. Yeah, we, we can stay with this workflow if you just can uh, come back to the previous slide. Yeah. 
because we have like question from Bruno, I think you already uh, answered that, but it's possible to have a hybrid pre-processing with Sophie Plus for some elements like cross-section and Grasshopper to generate elements, or is it just either Sophie Plus or Grasshopper? It, it is possible. I personally like to stick with one and, and uh, it, doing everything in Grasshopper in terms of pre-processing should be possible. Uh, but definitely, like for example, you can create your, your cross section in Sophie Plus. In Sophie Plus, it's super easy. You just draw the outline of your section, the openings, you add, you add some rebar, and that's it. Your section is there. And that section is going to be saved to the Sophistic database. And what you can do is you can open Grasshopper, and there is a component that will, will allow you to load any existing cross section from the Sophistic database. Mm -hmm. So you just link to that Sophie Plus cross section. And you can keep using the Grasshopper workflow by by using that easy to define section from Sophie Plus. Yeah, and uh, we're speaking about uh, sections. Uh, is it possible to make section using JSON files? I think you have shown me. Yes, yes, that's kind of. Um, I, I didn't mention this because it's a it's a big topic, but yeah. So I think you mentioned in the beginning we can create a cross section in Grasshopper with some Grasshopper spaghetti, definitely. A parametric section, but I think it becomes it makes your script become very big. It's not it's not necessarily the most efficient way to define a cross section. So we we developed a way another way to do it using text input, and then and, and this is done in JSON format. Why JSON? Because JSON is a it's a widely known um, stable like, yeah stable lightweight language more or less. So if you are a computational designer or some kind of person with a little bit of programming skills, you will know how to use that. Whereas Sophistic Teddy is something very special to Sophistic. So it's more like a, like a general or open, almost open source type of language yeah. that anyone because can it, use. It was because it was a question from Ivan who asked about this mm -hmm. JSON file and how to define the stress point and shear sections. Uh, like I think like in Teddy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in Teddy you can do it, but also in JSON. In the JSON format, okay. there are there are ways to do it. If you check out our online documentation, there there you will find a, a segment about uh, stress points and shield cuts. Okay, so it's so the answer for Ivan's question. So it's possible to make this JSON file with Grasshopper. Yes, correct. Definitely. Okay. All right. So moving on. This uh, this is the last part of the of the little introduction. Um, I I created this example a while ago. So these are very simple examples, parametric examples that will teach you in a simple way how that workflow works. So I can open that in a second and just navigate you through the different examples. They all have the same workflow, so it's easy to follow. And we, we are able to create these different five models in Sophistic. We are actually, for this one, I'm using the workflow where we stay in Grasshopper and run everything from within Grasshopper. For Again, for quick parametric studies, it's a very, very good way to, to use these two softwares together. So it will be like live uh, live demo uh, yeah. explanation. Yeah, nice. I'll, I'll do a quick live demo with showing this one uh, first, and then I'll jump to some, some more practical examples, which I, I have an, uh, a slide each for these next ones. So this is the big, the first big one that I'm going to quickly show. I, we don't have like a lot of time to go into details, but uh, this is um, a model. Uh, it's called Absolute Tower. This is actually a model. When I was first learning Grasshopper, I did an online course. Um, I forgot the name of the platform, but they showed you how to model this tower in Grasshopper. And basically what I did is I took the, the parts that were necessary for the analytical model and I connected it to Sophistic uh, components. And very quickly I could get this model of, of the tower in, in Sophistic for further analysis. So for this one in particular, I did a construction stage analysis in, in Sophistic and it worked, it worked great. You know, it's a real building. I just- uh, It is, it is, a, it is based just, on a real I building. Tried, I just tried to Google it and yeah, I've actually absolutely are twisted skyscrapers. Exactly. So this one is, I think, uh, my, by Mad Architects. I think that they are the, the architects that designed it. So it's a real, it's a real structure. Of course, in my parametric model, I can change a lot of the parameters. So I, I made it a little bit different than the real one. But I think there's like even like three towers that are following the same concept in there. I think they're in Canada somewhere. Yeah, in Toronto. I just go in Toronto. Uh, really, really nice busy, uh, building. So for those who are interested, in absolute towers. Mm -hmm. 
So again, I'll open up this one later and, and show you a couple of things live. Uh, the next practical example that I have here is this uh, composite cable state bridge. So this one is already kind of following that uh, access-based workflow that I explained in the beginning, where we have a, a geometric model of the bridge. So technically, you could use this one for for a 3D BIM model for, and, and send it to Tecla and start creating reinforcement and, and drawings there if you wanted to. So that's available. And at the same time, we have an analytical model that's that's connected to that geometric model. So I'll open up that one in a second. For this one and also for the previous one, I am not running everything inside Grasshopper. I'm just using it for pre-processing. Then I'm taking the, the, the model to, to Sophistic SSD, Sophistic Structural Desktop, and then I'm running construction stage analysis like in this one. In this one, we are able to uh, to do a cable tuning also in Sophistic. So if you're interested in, in cable bridges, we uh, Sophistic is very widely used and very popular for these complicated big bridges. So you can do, for example, a, a cable tuning on the final system where you are um, trying to figure out what are the cable forces that will give you, for example, a zero deck deflection on the final stage of, of this of the construction of this bridge. That's one way to do it. Then if you want to do it during construction, that's also possible. It's, in Sophistic, you can figure out the cable forces, um, optimize to, to give you a certain displacement or bending moment at a given element during construction. So you can also optimize during construction and you can even do it non-linearly. So if you want to consider things like cable sag, you can, uh, you can optimize the cables for that while considering construction stages. So we go quite far uh, in terms of these complex bridges and if you are, you know, if you're considering Sophistic for something like this, definitely check it out. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's. I think it's, it's very, very good for that. The last example that I have is this concrete segmental bridge. So, uh, especially for this one, we have very cool tools to create the geometry and to create also the analytical model. So, on the screen here on the left, for example, the tool that I am trying to show, you can see the, the height of the cross section is displayed at different stations. So what we have here is the ability to take any cross section variable, such as the height, but it doesn't have to be the height, it can be the width or, or anything. In this case, the height, we are assigning values at giving stations. And then we have a, a curve that interpolates through these values, which you can see down here. And that curve is being used to create the superstructure geometry, yeah. essentially. And this and this curve, this is the grasshopper component, right? I think it is a yeah. one one of most advanced grasshopper components I have ever seen <laughs> <laughs> with this graph visualization. I have never uh, ever seen so advanced component. So yeah, it just makes so uh, bridge designers so easier because this type of bridges they're really popular in Scandinavia. I think mm -hmm. like maybe about 100 bridges, I think this already uh, with yeah. this shape, like, uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, so make this definitely. So I'm looking forward to see this example. Yeah, and, and uh, the other cool thing is you can feed in a lot of this data from Excel. So not only for the change of the cross section along the axis, but also for things like the stationing, you can see it on the top right of the screen, we have something with, that we call placements which are defining the joint basically in between the segments. And for each of these joints, we can define rotations. So we can define like a skew angle or a kind of like a super elevation angle. We can also assign names to each of these placements. And then we can use the names if we're trying to say, okay, tendon number one is going from placement A mm -hmm. to placement Z or whatever. So we can reference not only the station values, we can also use the names as a reference when we're trying to define some other things. So these placements end up being very, very useful in the workflow. And it, it, it looks like it's super beneficial because it's easier to make this kind of things here, like in Grasshopper, than mm -hmm. in uh, just to see, for example, the station and cables in Sophistic, right? Yeah. It's very quick, quick, mm -hmm. and it's very easy to feed in large amount of data through Excel. So the workflow is, is really, really optimized. If you're working on these type of bridges, check it out. I'm happy to, to give you a presentation more detail into this if, if anyone is interested. But yeah, things like tendon modeling for this type of bridge, this is a um, concrete segmental bridge in, in built in balanced cantilever. So we have the cantilever tendons. That's the second image to the right in the center. And defining those through Excel is, is quick. It's you, We are using one single component 
that will create all of the tendons in one go. Uh, basically, you need to set up that Excel spreadsheet in a certain way, but it's very easy and very intuitive. And you get all your tendons. You can go to Excel and just change the, the some of the offsets, like the vertical or the horizontal offsets from the from the alignment. And you you can get those changes happening uh, live as soon as you save that Excel sheet. The the tendons will update in your three D model. Yeah, and I love this data driven design because you can use this data further to yeah at the building at the, at the construction site during the designing and mm -hmm. making your drawings or three D models. So uh, yeah. Absolutely. So we, we model these tendons very precisely. If you want to, again, if you want to consider things like super elevation, the tendons will actually change and consider that super elevation using a local coordinate system. So if you want to consider like also vertical alignment, uh, horizontal alignment, all these things, you can take them to the FEA model and you can also take them to the Tecla model because it's, it's uh, as built, right? It's like the, the exact geometry. Yeah, it will um, be it will be amazing to have this kind of beam models like for every single section uh, because mm -hmm. now we are producing 3D model that actually it will be like a final final stage. Yeah. Uh, but to have this like uh, step by step with the correct super elevation because we are building a little bit too high these bridges. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So great. Yeah. So the other thing you see here on the top right is the the exact geometry of the. Of the segmental bridge, you can see that the you know the 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 bridge is not following a curved alignment; it's actually following a corded alignment. So if you have this like uh, precast or ca cast in place segmental bridge, you can have that exact geometry of the of the segments, and you can again send that to Tecla for for uh, 3D re reinforcement and, and and shop drawings. So Sophistic is used also for precast uh, uh, calculation of the precast structures. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you can even do geometry control and so on. So it, it gets uh, quite advanced there. Yeah. All right. So finally, the the next super cool thing is that we can have one single geometry, one single geometric model for this bridge, and we can get multiple analytical models from the same Grasshopper script. So you can have on the top left, you see the, the beam FEA model where you have where you probably want to simulate your construction stage analysis and, and do some um, stress checks and so on. On the right, you have a shell model based on the same geometry. And our components really help you create this shell model very, very quickly. So for example, I had that the beam model on the left and I created a shell model in 20 minutes based on, based on the same geometry because we have the components that make, that make your life easier. The, the other advantage is that the tendons they don't care if they are intersecting beam elements or shell elements in Sophistic. They are the same definition, the same Teddy code, text code. Uh, you can run it for either model without any changes and it works perfectly. So there's no additional effort there in, in modeling the tendons for the shell model. And even for the construction stages, so I know, you know if you're doing construction stages, you're typically going to use the, the left model, not the right model. But just for fun, just to try it out, I, I ran the same script for the construction stages for the shell model without making any changes. And it worked. And why? Because in Sophistic, we're using um, group numbers for running construction stage analysis. So you're basically saying, OK, I want to activate group 10 at stage 20, uh, 10 and then group 20 at stage 20. So I just assigned the same group IDs to the left model and to the right model. And I was able to run that stage analysis for the shell model, and it worked. Uh, on the bottom, you see a, a third option, which is the, 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 the volumetric, the volume model with F, FE volume elements, in this case, a tetrahedral mesh, which you can also get from the same analytical, from the same geometrical model in Grasshopper. So, so, you, have like a single, so you have like a single uh, version of truth. So like a single, just a model. And if you make, a, for example, changes for the road alignment, so I can understand that you can change easily in these three, three models. Mm -hmm. So if exactly. you do not if you do not have this in like in Grasshopper like manually you have this three different actually sophistic models. Exactly, yeah. So any changes done to the cross section, to the alignment, to the placements, to the axis variables, all of these three sophistic models will update in uh, live. The the text files, the corresponding text files will be created again, and then you can just import them and run them in in sophistic, and you have an, an updated model. So it's very very easy to have these different options. I think it becomes very important as a as a bridge designer 
to to have options and and you know the shell model is going to be used for different things than the beam model and sometimes the shell model is not created because it's it takes too, too much time it's too much effort but with this workflow it's so easy so you have it there so you might as well check for some things that that are actually important yeah, uh, just one technical uh, thing. When you uh, we just uh, missed uh, focus on your of your camera, uh, mm -hmm. so if you can just move a little bit your camera, uh, because when you were, uh, let me see, just because you are blurry a little bit your camera on your computer. Yeah, let I, me see. let's see. I don't know how to fix. Oh, let me let me see if I can do it here. I think when you were drinking water, so you missed the focus of the of the camera. Yeah. So it's still gone, the focus? It's a little bit better right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can uh, we can hear you we can hear you where so Okay. Let me let me finish the slides and then when I jump to the live part I can try to fix my camera. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Okay, so I just want to uh, quickly play uh, play two videos of the of the beam model and the shell model doing that same construction stage analysis that I that I mentioned earlier. So here we have the classical beam analysis where you activate the segment and and do creep and shrinkage analysis and post tensioning and so on. And that last segment fits in perfectly. So for the beam model, that's that's a classical type of analysis. But I also did it just for fun for the shell model, and check it out how it how it worked using the same tendons, the same construction stage definition. Even the pre-camber analysis, where we're making sure that that last segment is fitting in perfectly, it also worked fine for the shell model. So kind of gives you an idea of the power of Sophistic, also very good quality mesh that we get from, from uh, using the Grasshopper interface. So you said it was like about 20 minutes to just create the shell model based on the, uh, based on the beam model, right? Yes, yeah. Because I was using our components that make it quite easy to do. So let me see if I can fix that camera. Yeah, it's everything. It's okay, everything is okay right now. Oh, everything's so fine now. Can, yeah, everything is fine. We, it, it was fixed. Uh, Diego just said that it's the easiest is turn off and turn out the webcam. I think yeah. that uh, <laughs> this trick is every uh, every time is working. But it's, now it's universal. Uh, huh? Just yeah, turn it off and turn it on again. It works. Yeah, <laughs> always work. With, is it something with Grasshopper and Sophistic? <laughs> is something that's <laughs> working? So just to turn it off. <laughs> I don't know. I I I, I will have to try that. Yeah. Okay. We can see your screen. Uh, screen right now. With the right side, we have a Grasshopper, and on the left side, we have a Rhino. Yeah. Exactly. So these are the the five simple examples that I created a while ago to illustrate how the workflow works. So if we work, if we focus on one of these uh, things, you see we always have the same workflow. We have the base geometry, which is some Grasshopper spaghetti. Right, so no, this is like no, no. defining. I, I, it's not. It's not spaghetti, Andreas. It's a really clean and well structured script. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So this is this is. I think it's very important to try to have a clean script and, and not a spaghetti because it just makes it less scary for somebody to to, yeah, to, yeah. Fully, to use your agree. script. Or even if you open your script in three years, you want you want to be able to understand it very quickly. So do things like right here. Uh, what each of these groups is doing. Try to always wake in the same way. What I always try to do is I like I, I put the wires to um, what's it called to faint when they are in between groups, but then they are thick inside each or, each or, and every one of these groups. So I I have my preferences. Everyone can find their own, but I found that for me this is a clean way to work. Anyway, um, we have here the base geometry that's creating the 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 needed geometry that we can later on hook up some of the sophistic stuff. So in the second step, for example, here we have the structural elements. This is one of our components. It's called the structural line. You see that I can add a bunch of panels with information, such as the group ID or the section ID, the direction of the local coordinate system, and the fixation. So actually, these lines, I'm using them to define the support conditions at the start and end of the, of the slab. So you can see the fixation literal that I'm using is PP, which in Sophistic is please block all three translational degrees of freedom, right? So I can change that to something like PZ and you will see that the preview in Rhino will change. So this is the, the symbol for PZ and I was able to change it here. Yeah, I can so also- the same, So it's the same syntax like you are using in Sophistic, right? It's the same syntax as in Sophistic, right? So you don't have to learn it twice. 
we can also right click and set the fixation here with some uh, by just by clicking on the on the fixation it, it gives you here also what the syntax is the required syntax so that's one way to do it also just hover your mouse over it and it will give you a little explanation of what the expected sy syntax is so i think it should be fairly easy to to use and it gives you the added advantage that you're starting to learn a little bit of teddy of, of cat imp because we are using kind of the same naming here that we are using in in sophistic text input so it has that little added benefit so for the structural line you see we're just defining the the supports we can see here the preview of the local coordinate system for the structural area down here very similar we get the uh the local coordinate system and we we are providing essentially here some structural properties like thickness like material id like the orientation, I want to have my, my shell elements centered in that plane, uh, not eccentric because we have the option to do it eccentric as well. And I want to have a, a regular mesh if possible. In this case, it's probably not possible because we have that big opening there, but uh, you, there is some different mesh options like, let's see what we have here. We have automatic, we have regular, or we have single element. You can also mesh okay. it as a single element. So that's the second step, defining the structural elements. Down here, I have the same definition for the loads. So we have some grasshopper components that connect to a sophisticated components. This one is creating an area load. It's, uh, it's saving that area load in load case number two, and it has a force vector of zero, zero and minus 15. So 15 kilonewton pointing downwards. Mm -hmm. The third step are the sophistic modules. So if you remember, Right we, here, for example, we have the Sophie mesh component that will uh, you're able to define your mesh density and some other inputs. We have the Sophie load component where you can start defining the properties of your load cases. So, for example, here we have a load case attributes component that allows you to define two load cases and the corresponding actions to, that, to those two load cases, uh, the corresponding factors of dead weight and the corresponding titles. So here we have load case number one. Um, it's, it has action D for dead load. It has a factor of dead weight of one, and it's called dead load. And load case number two is a live load, action L1. It has zero factor of dead weight, and the name is live load, basically. Mm -hmm. so, so is there any, any limitations that you can uh, define with the modules uh, that you have in Sophistic and Grasshopper? Do you have the same amount of data that you can uh, put? Is there any something that it's not possible? To define, for example, in these modules, like let's say, let's say mesh mod module, is the same uh, like options that you can set up also. Manually yeah, in... I think it's for the mesh module. It should be the same option that, that you would get in a in a Sophie Plus, for example. That, that is a module that has been developed for way longer. And um, we also have also this input user or or control. So if you know Sophistic, there are some control settings that you can set for every module. And also some user settings. So if there's something that we might have missed, mm -hmm. um, you can always go to the manual and look up how to imp how to input that in text input. And you just provide a panel and you hook it up to this user input, and then you're able to add whatever feature is missing. Okay, cool. So we can uh, define everything that is something you are missing or you have developed yeah. of your own code. So yeah, great. Yeah, and it, if it's something special that is still missing, you can always. If you know a little bit of Python, you can program your own Grasshopper node that creates a text input, and you can just hook it up to our, to the to the rest of the workflow, and it should work fine. It should be integrated fine. So, a couple more things. Like, let me open up a panel here. You can link, for example, this Sophie Mesh panel, uh, this Sophie Mesh component to a text panel, and you can see the exact Teddy code that's being created there. So every time I change something in the geometry, this Teddy code will be changing live, right? So what we're doing is we're linking up all of these modules, Aqua, Sophie Mesh, Sophie Load, and we're hooking them up to the Sophistic project component where you can run a calculation from within Grasshopper. So let me show you. I can run it by clicking Calculate. It's showing me down here what module is currently running. So we have Aqua running, then Sophie Mesh, then it should run Sophie Load and so on. It's usually way faster. It, takes, it took a little time because of the screen sharing. But anyway, I have access here to the Sophistic post processors, or in this case, the, the animator, where I can get, I can see the, the FEA mesh and I can click through the load cases and so on. So let's do a quick experiment. Let's take this model. Let's say we don't really like the results. So we just go back to the basic geometry 
And let's say we change the position of that opening to somewhere else, like here. Um, let's put it away from the load a little bit and let's go ahead and rerun it. Do you have your Sophistic mode, uh, like uh, Sophistic open? Uh, do you need to have Sophistic open right now, it, or you just open? I don't. Mode? I don't need to, but I can. So I okay. can have. I can have Sophistic open. I can even have the post processors open, um, and it should run fine. Now I have an error, which is funny that I got one during the calculation. Let's see what it says in the report. So I can jump to the error here. Definition of structural area is incorrect. Boundary is is not created correctly. It could be because that opening is going there over the support conditions. Mm -hmm. I can imagine this could be the reason. Let me try again. And then in the meantime, about the mesh module, we have a question from Ramis. Uh, is it possible to use external mesh tools like Jimish? Jimish? Um, I don't know what that is, to be honest. OK, so maybe it's external or something to create. OK, yeah, we got so results from Sophistic. Yeah, exactly. So this is, you know, this one, this time it worked fine. So I have the same example for all of these other little ones. So, so these tubes right here, the interesting thing is that I have a a beam element that is being connected with some rigid constraints to a shell. So just showing you how that would work if you want to connect the end of the, of the beam to the beginning of the shell. Let me just open it to show you what it looks like. So there it is. We have a beam on the left and the shell connected to the shell on the right. And you can see that the force transfer is working correctly once I activate that, that load. Um, anyway, if you want to check these out, um, hit me up. I can, I can, I'm happy to share this model with you so you can start practicing using these uh, five small examples. So that's, yeah. that's the, the simple example. Uh, now I can jump to the more complicated ones. Yeah, I think it's a really good start to start with this like simple shell model, simple beam model, and just to try how to define loads and then go to like more advanced like this uh, bridges and towers. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Let me close up some existing stuff. This one took a few seconds to load. This is a big model of the tower. So there it is. Um, let me show you quickly how it's made, how the model is made. So essentially, it's a, it's a base curve, which is an ellipse, which is defining my, my first foundation slab uh, with this ellipse shape. Right, so it's parametric. I can change the ellipse size and so on, and, and uh, everything will update. Then I'm taking that that initial ellipse, and I basically multiplying it in, in the height in, in the z direction. So I can set up here the floor height. It's set to four meters. I can set the amount of floors. It's set to fifty two, and then I can I can use a, a domain component to set the start and the end rotation. So the, the start rotation of the basement is zero. And then I have 82 degrees for the for the top floor. Mm -hmm. And then I can also use some grasshopper components to define the kind of the interpolation of that of that rotation pattern. So here I have a linear interpolation. It's just evenly changing the, the angle all the way to the top. Um, I can hook up something more fancy like this down here, and, and you will get a different result. So mm -hmm. that that's what that course in, in that time taught me how to do um, in using grasshopper, which is super cool. And then I just connected some of these um, components to our Sophistic components and was able to create a, um, a Sophistic model. So here in the top, I have the load bearing walls and I have the Sophistic structural area component that creates all of those load bearing walls. And I'm using here a series component to define the group IDs of all of these walls that will help me run the construction stage analysis. Then I have things like the floor thickness and the floor material and so on. Same way for the other things, right? The other structural pieces like the slabs with the opening or the elevator duct, it's all there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to switch here to the side view or to a front view and just show you, for example, in the case of the elevator. By the way, this is how I like to organize data for a more complicated model. I like to use generic data components, the generic grasshopper data components. And 
connect my sophistic structural component to the data component. It's just a mm. collection of everything. I give it a name, load bearing walls, and then I connect that very close to where I have my, my Sophie mesh component um, further down the line. So I have everything in one place. By the way, here you saw I clicked on the component and it's showing me all the group IDs for all of those uh, load bearing walls. And I can do the same down here in my collection for my elevator duct. I can show all the group IDs that, that are being used for the construction and stage the, analysis. And this is the same IDs in Sophistic, right? They're the same IDs that are used in Sophistic to run the stage analysis, yeah. Hmm. So let me, I can go here to the, to the project folder. And I can open up the animator, the meshed model in Sophistic, and I can just show you some some of the stages that I'm that I was able to run here. So as you can see here, I can run through the different stages. Oops, let me freeze the deformation amplitude to like 50 times the, the real deformation. Then I, I freeze it and I can just click through some of these stages and just see the, the stage analysis. Hmm. Just uh, as an example. Okay, any question about this one? Uh, let me see. It was about uh, this G mesh. It was, it was uh, Ramis just wrote about Python package. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm or not, unfortunately. No, so or that... Sophistic multi -tid. I don't know. Uh, if you can, Ramis, just uh, elaborate a little bit more here. Yeah. Yeah. Also, in the end, we'll open up for Q and A. So I think you can also yeah yeah we have uh, we have lots of questions. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but none of them was to this uh, tower. No. Okay, so I'll, I'll close this one and I'll open the next example. It's the cable state bridge. Again, fully parametric yeah. model of a of a complex structure. Let's give it a few seconds. So to every load. so all the geometry was uh, modeled in uh, uh, in grasshopper right yes based on their like just a road line or uh, like an input exactly so, a straight line yeah yeah here it's a it's a straight line that i'm using for the for the alignment but we have some components that are allow you to define horizontal alignment and vertical alignment based on the road design data uh here for example i can add a a radius to this axis let's say i hope i write something that makes sense 2000 meters so i should get a, a curved bridge after a few seconds and everything should be connected if the if the model has has been made correctly in grasshopper everything is connected you see that the towers are now aligned with an angle or um, all the wires are connected correctly all the cables so that should be fine um we have also a bunch of cross section components here, parametric, where I can change, for example, for the main girders, the, the cross-section height is 2,000 millimeters. I can change that, and I will see the change happening here in real time. I don't want to do it now because it's going to take a few seconds to update because I'm streaming. But just so you know, 100% of everything here is, is parametric, and you can easily change it and, and take it how, to Sophistic. How towers were modulated here in this case? Uh, yeah, the like tower. The tower, I'm using the same concept, the same axis-based concept that I'm using for the superstructure. I'm using for it for the tower, except it's vertical. Okay. So if you want to use also variability, you know, if the if the tower is, is going to change along the height of the bridge, you can also do it very quickly and very easily. And you also have the added advantage that our components will create a, a geometric and an analytical model of the tower. So you, you very quickly get a, a working model, both geometric and then analytical as well. Let me zoom in here into the top of the tower. Hopefully you can see the geometric model. Mm -hmm. And if I turn off the geometric model of the tower, you should see the analytical model just behind it. So you see here some rigid links, for example, you have, yeah. you have the structural lines of the towers and of the cables, so it's all there. So for this one, it's organized in the same way, right? So I have like groups defining the main beams, the deck, the cross beams and so on. And out of all of these groups, we have the data component that is collecting all those structural lines, like main beam as a lens. And I'm putting them back in the end again, where I can kind of see the, the summary of all the structural components that I have. Let me show you here on the side. If I click on the cable as a lens, you will see all of the 
the group IDs and the section ID for every single cable. So you see left of the tower, you have group 161, 162, 163, and right of the tower, we have 261, 262, 263. So assigning all this data for the group numbering is, is usually very hard if you're, if you're doing it in, a, in, a, you know, in, a, in, a, in just a CAD environment. But if you're working in a parametric environment, it's quite easy to just assign a list of grouping numbers to the component and you get everything done in one go. So it's a, it's a yeah. huge time saver if you are a little bit familiar with computational design. Yeah, and a little bit live with the data trees, I, I suppose. Yeah, also, <laughs> also. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, what, yeah. What, what, uh, what component are you using for tags uh, for showing this? Uh, uh... The tags are embedded in our components. Okay, so, so, you, so you have own components for all the tags. Yeah, let me show you here. Like, Turn off the deck geometric model and go to the analytical model of the deck. So it's our, our sophisticated structural area component. I can click on it and it gives it shows you the tags by default. Mm -hmm. So it, they, are, they are part of our components, the tags. So we okay. what we think is important to display, we are displaying it there, which is the local coordinate system and the group ID in this case. OK, um, I think I can jump to the last example. Mm -hmm. Which is the balance cantilever? We have just uh, we just uh, have some comments that look so sexy and cool, and I don't know if it's about you or it's about the grasshopper <laughs> and, <laughs> or about the bridge model. <laughs> Obviously, grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> Let's open uh, up the the last example. Uh, yeah, and speaking about the last e example, so we have uh, again a question from uh, Bruno about this for uh, three models types from the same geometry how do we handle the element number reaching in the maximum if uh, the max number reaching the maximum limit for solid models i normally need to break the model into different grp numbers yeah so there's a setting in, in the in the measure in sophistic where you can set uh, the uh, the group divisor it's called so if you have a group divisor of 10,000, then that's the maximum number of elements that you can have in, in, in one group. But you can, you can scale that to 100,000 and so on. So that's just a quick change that you can make. And, and uh, okay. I think that's the, 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 the yeah, fastest great. way to, to fix that. So here's the balance cantilever bridge. Um, let me just quickly navigate you to the workflow. In this, in this particular example, we're really taking the taking advantage of the workflow that we created for bridges because we're using a lot of different cool components that are special for these type of bridges. We have the horizontal and vertical alignment, first of all. So this is um, streamed from Excel. You can change the, the alignment in Excel and it will change here live. That's the first piece. Then we have the cross-section component. It's uh, The cross-section has been defined in the JSON format, so in a, in a lightweight text format. It's fully parametric. so. We have a component here that allows you to assign values to any of the variables that are created in that cross section. So things from girder depth to top width to bottom width to web thickness to cantilever tip thickness, absolutely everything is parametric. And yeah, just change the sliders and you get an updated geometric model, an updated beam model, and an updated shell model. So it, it's crazy how. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I have even tested, and you can also make a roundings around like a corners, like a chamfers. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we so have chamfers, also, yeah. we have fillets, and, and so on. So it gets quite exact. Because why, if we if we're trying to use this for BIM, then we definitely need a lot, like a lot of accuracy in yeah. uh, in the geometry of the section. What about the if we have a double hole cross section? Uh, do you have also a tool for that, or it will need to be different? Like for example, JSON file, or it's the same. So if, if you have a multi-cell box girder, it definitely can get a little tricky to define it in, in JSON. But what we did is we uploaded a bunch of cross sections to the to our online documentation. So if you go there, you will find and you can download the single cell box girder section that's fully parametrized. It's it's in in, uh, in metric and in imperial units. And uh, we have a, a two cell box girder, a three cell box girder, and I think a four cell box girder. All already there, available for you to download and use immediately. Yeah. Uh, here's the next step. Here's where you define the. You, basically, you take any of the variables that are defined up here in the section, such as d, which is the height, and you can replace the the default value 
with uh, different values at different stations and different tangents and also different types of curves. It can be a spline, um, it can be a straight line. The spline can have a horizontal tangent to the left and to the right. You can have jumps. So you can get very, very exact in how you are making this variation of D along the axis. So this and, component is very actually, powerful. And actually you can do with every single parameter, right? Because with every single one, yeah. yeah. So feel free to use this for the superstructure. Feel free to use it for the substructure. If you have peers that are looking very fancy, you can use them too for that. Uh, the last piece here are the so-called placements, which are defining the, the stations along the axis with their corresponding name, their corresponding rotations. If you want to have super elevation at, at every joint defined, you can do it there. If you want to have skews uh, for, the, for the peers or for the superstructure at every joint, you can also define them here. So this component is also quite nice. And you can display the placements by clicking on this component, which is we call the axis definition component, which is the collection from the alignment, the section, the variation of the, of the section variables along the axis and the placements. So this thing will display uh, here uh, the placements with their IDs and their station data and so on. So I would say to the left of that component is kind of that single source of truth that we have. And then to the right of that component, we're creating the different models. So we're creating the geometric model, which I have collected here on the top, right? So this is something I can bake in Rhino. And now it's baked. So I can like pick one segment here just to show you, take it out and show you that it's a working 3D hmm. object that you can use for, for Tecla. Down here, you see the tendons popping out in their, in their correct location. So that's the geometric model. Then we have the, the beam analytical model. Let me turn off the, or unbake that real quick, Control Z. And let me actually turn off the analytical model. So here's the beam geometric, the beam analytical model, right? It's just lines and curves. Following the axis, we have the tendons, at, at least for that first cantilever, they are, they are uh, turned on right now. I can click on the superstructure collection, and we see all the group IDs for all the, um, the beam elements in the superstructure. So that's analytical model one. Let me turn that off real quick and go a little bit down in my script and show you the shell model. So I will turn this one on. So I can imagine that you have also like the third one model, like with the simplification uh, or um, even with better accuracy, right? For the, uh, for the beam, for the Tecla model. Uh, let's, let's say like you have analytical model with the, all the simplification and mm -hmm. you have also an, another one with the, all the uh, details that you need. For... Uh, yeah, I understand. So in case you want to separate the analytical model from the geometric model you can this is always a question that comes up bridge designers you know they have their way of working some of them they want to ignore the the vertical profile of the axis for the analytical yeah, for example, model yeah. or they want to ignore the super elevation just because it adds complexity that they don't want and they some of these engineers are annoyed that now bim means that it's just one model and you have to deal with it but in in this case you can easily uh, separate the information. You can have one geometric model that has all the details. You can have the analytical model where you just turn off the, the super elevation and you can take it from there, but it's still using the same cross section, the same placements, the same axis variability. So you decide. So it's really, really flexible for, for engineers to use in a, in a BIM workflow. Um, Chris, I think I am, I'm done with what I wanted to show for now. Yeah. That's good. We have lots of questions here and we can start with this bridge if we are speaking about the tendons. Yeah. Uh, so it was a question from Ivan. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. I can just... Um, do you see the questions? No. You, you, should I read? Yeah, I can read. Yeah, if you can read it, please. Yeah. From Ivan, in case I have external tendons in the box guider, it makes sense for a beam uh, finite element model. How can I in incorporate external pre-stress tendons in a shell equivalent? Equ equivalent. 
in the finite element model in Grasshopper? Yeah, that's a good one. For I, I haven't tried it myself for external tendons. Um, I I think Sophistic might be able to handle it just like that, just just by the geometry. So normally for shell elements, it matters where the tendon is intersecting the shell element, and Sophistic will compute the correct corresponding forces for, uh, transferring the, from the tendon to the to the concrete. In case of external, uh, I don't have that experience personally, so I, I don't okay. I can't really say for sure, but it it might just work as it is. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, before we go to the, all the questions, the last thing that I said that uh, it will be surprise at the end. So we would like to invite you already next month, uh, together with uh, Andreas from Sophistic, we are going to make master classes. It will be two days uh, about like practical. We are going to use uh, the one real world example. Maybe you have this model already, Andreas. I have it. Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, so we can open. Up. So we are going to present this. Uh, this master class is going to to be called Design Bridges Like a Pro. It's hundred percent free uh, to join. Uh, you can go to link learngrasshopper.com slash masterclass sophistic and Tecla. I will uh, share the link in the uh, in the chat. So actually, you can uh, already register. So we are going to talk about like the workflow between. Uh, we are going to create the bridge from scratch. We are going to have just a road line. And based on this road line, uh, Andreas will create an analytical model in uh, Sophistic. And then we are going to stream this data to Tecla. So we are going to create this geometry in Tecla. So it will be for the first day. First day. And the second day, we are going to also uh, model uh, tendon, ca tendon cables uh, in Tecla and is sophistic as well, uh, thanks to Grasshopper. And even we are going to make reinforcement. So it was already a question uh, about how to uh, create uh, reinforcement in the models. So definitely I'm going to show how to connect this to actually three softwares. We're going to connect Tecla, Sophistic, and Grasshopper. So really, really recommend you can already go to Learn Grasshopper. I, I sent the link so we can register. So it will be next month. So it will be highly practical. So Andreas, I see you can share your, you share your model. So this is the model that we are going to create. Uh, all the cables, columns, foundations, so that we are going to use this uh, amazing workflow because I think it's uh, these two tools like Tecla and Sophistic. They are may maybe most advanced in the using of Grasshopper. And if you can combine these two the, with the one single of truth model, it can give like, you can really design bridges like a pro. <laughs> uh, so really, re uh, so really recommend to, uh, to join. And we have some, uh, still some questions. Uh, let me know, I have some start, some questions. Uh, so let's start with the Ramis. Uh, can you get the output from CDP file to Grasshopper? Do you know this uh, file? I think it's. I think he meant CDB, which is the the central database, the Sophistic database file. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure what he means about getting that file into Grasshopper. So we, again, we're not officially doing post processing in Grasshopper yet from the analysis model. Something that might come in the future, but at, at this time we don't have it. I think there's some plugins. So, so if you go to GitHub, I think someone already developed something where you can access the Sophistic database and bring back results if you want to run like uh, optimization. Um, so you might check that out. But on, from our end, we didn't develop it yet. Yeah. Uh, it's a question from Martin. Can I get info about nodes from SSD, like geometry loads into Grasshopper? Like when I do the SA fee export and use it in the another software, but instead extract in directly into Grasshopper and use it. Uh, you can also open uh, your, yeah, I, if I think, can you see the question as, as well? I can see, yeah, I can yeah, see. Okay. okay, yeah. Yeah, so again, uh, getting information back into Grasshopper is is not uh, officially supported, right? But you, there's there's always workarounds. So one thing you can do is use the, the result viewer, which essentially 
accesses the Sophistic database and creates tables with, with loads, with geometry, with anything that you have in the database. So you have it in tables already. So why not send that to Excel and then use our Excel component to read it back in into, into Grasshopper. And then you have the data and then you can do with it whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, Stefana also asked uh, asked about this uh, CDB. It was it, it is lo most like uh, it will be great to have this. <laughs> yeah, we we are we're on it. So we we know it's uh it's interesting. So maybe just uh, give us a, some uh, time. Before I ask about this uh, this uh, question, and it uh, I think Ramis wrote about it's uh, multi-threading. It's about this uh, in the Grasshopper when you have components. Mm -hmm. Some of the components you have this uh, computation computational method of uh, computing. Yeah, uh, yeah do I don't I... know if if our developers worked with that, if they enabled that or not. I, unfortunately, I can't say. We do have multi-threading in Sophistic itself, so you can run the, the calculation in, in, in a multi-core computer way faster. So this is one of our features, but in Grasshopper, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. Uh, some people ask about these uh, files. So if you would like to get these files that uh, was shown, so please contact uh, Andreas directly, I don't know, LinkedIn? This yeah, is LinkedIn is good. Or... Just send me yeah. a message and, and we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, so you will get all the all the files. Um, another question is: uh, Is there any command to easily define bore profiles? Yeah, bore profiles is is a functionality in Sophistic where you can uh, do like a soil structure interaction. So you will get like interface uh, springs at the nodes, right in the in the files. You can. Uh, with our components, it's not out of the box, but you can use text input to add the required command to assign the bore profile to a structural line. So using a workaround, you can do it, but uh, we didn't add it to the standard workflow yet. Okay. Um, let me see. Here is a question from Angel. Uh, is it possible to create a Grasshopper script for incremental launching method? Yeah, absolutely. So in, in, in Sophistic, the in, incremental launching is working by, it's a, it's a stage analysis, right? So you need to activate groups at different moments. And we, we have also a, a, a module that helps you do the incremental launching. But from the pre-processing perspective, we have everything in Grasshopper to, to set up the, the analysis for an ILM calculation. Yeah, answering the question. So as I was using Sophistic and they're using in lots of companies, so actually this tool was created for <laughs> this increment and clenching method. <laughs> Uh, let me see there. We have some two more questions. If you have more, so please ask. We have uh, from Ivan something about the def definition of composite, composite section in Grasshopper. Yeah, we have the component for that. Uh, okay. To, to so is that, connect is two separate? sections. Is that separate one for to connect like, for example, steel and concrete? Yeah, so you can do it either already in the JSON file, in the text file, you can create a composite section fully in there, or you can have two let's say two separate JSON files, one for the for the girder, the steel girder, and one for the for the deck. Uh, and then you we have a composite section component where you can connect both. And yeah, you essentially get the composite section for Sophistic with the help yeah. of that component. It's Great. pretty straightforward. Okay, I think we have answered all the questions. Uh, I don't see any more. Just wait a couple of uh, couple of seconds. Just last time, remember uh, reminder. So in one month, we are going to have this master class. We are going to more into details. Maybe it will be more just going live uh, demonstration, and we are going to design the bridges from scratch uh, in Sophistic, and then we are going to send all the data to Tecla, and yeah, and we are going for sure make some changes and and uh, in the in the road line for example and see the power of parametric design let me see there was uh, some question uh, there's even thanks for the webinar so yeah thank you very much uh, uh, i love this webinar R really lots of informations and yeah 
I think like people understood that like, this is the new way of working <laughs> and it, for sure it's a future, right? And because I see also like there are lots of investment of Sophistic in the, in the tools. So I can imagine that they are thinking about this is the new way of designing structures in the, in the Sophistic. Yeah, it could be. So we still very much support the standard workflows, right? With AutoCAD, it's very easy to use. So um, you don't have to go through the steep learning curve. In, in some cases, people don't want to. But if you're into this, if you want to learn this, it's a it's a superpower. I remember when I learned Grasso for the first time, I felt like I just like I just got a new superpower. Yeah, this is how it, it feels is. like. Yeah, we have lots of uh, good feedback. Saurav, great presentation. Uh, Bruno, uh, thanks for the webinar. Bruno, thanks for all the good questions uh, that you have. So yeah, uh, I think there is no more questions. There we are already more than one hour, 20 minutes. So that's great. Uh, thank you one more time uh, for your time. And again, if someone wants to uh wants to have this uh, script so let's uh let's contact uh, andreas the, directly on the on the linkedin and hope to see you in the next masterclass i see that martin already registered for the masterclass amazing presentation for you again kudos yeah diego yeah marco yeah well, we, we, there there have been uh, it was 200 people live so yeah well, i think cool. we grabbed the attention so hope to see also 200 on the uh on the master class yeah oh so many so many thanks messages okay that's all uh, thank you very much and see you see you next time bye bye thank you chris bye bye everyone